In this video, I'll be showing you 10 tips and tricks that you can start implementing into your next video when using Adobe Premiere Pro. These tips will help you save so much time in editing, as well as help you get better looking video and sounding audio, so let's get it. You gotta just press record. Hey, what is up? I am Omar Altskoy with Think Media, and before we jump into tip number one, I wanted to let you know that we'll be putting timestamps to all the tips in this video down in the description below, as well as in the pinned comment. And so be sure to check that out if you wanted to jump through the video or if you reference this video again in the future. All right, so the first tip is going to be starting a sequence with the correct settings. Uh, in video editing and in creating videos in general, you wanna make sure that you're maintaining a consistent workflow and maintaining consistent settings throughout the entire process. So from the frame rate you select in camera to the frame rate you are editing in and then the, the settings that you are using to render the video to then get the best looking video as much as possible. So the way you wanna start a sequence is a super simple way. You can simply click the clip that you want to start editing. In this case, I have this clip right here. I'm gonna double click it and it's gonna show, it's just a talk head video that I did a couple days ago uh, and also if you want to change the way you see your clips in your bin you can click the icon view that'll allow you to actually see and scrub throughout to make sure you get the clip you want but all that to say I'm going to right click this clip and then I'm gonna select new sequence from clip now uh, Premiere Pro is just gonna take all the settings from that video clip and then create a sequence based off from it so this is really a fail proof way to get started and I love this process because I never have to think about my settings. I don't have to go into file, new sequence, and then select, you know, customize the frame size and all that stuff. Just right click, new sequence from clip, and you're good to go. Now, I would encourage you though to change the name of this sequence because it'll just use the name of the clip. And so just to make sure you are all streamlined and clean, you can simply click on the sequence right here and then uh, change the name. This is a video, M50 versus ZV1, hit enter, and then as you can see, the name to the sequence has changed. Now that tip works for about 90% of use cases. Uh, however, the only time that wouldn't work is if you decided to shoot in high frame rates, like a 60 or 120 frames per second, and you knew you were editing a 30 frames per second video. And in that case, let's go into tip number two, which is slow motion. So as you can see in my bin, I have four different clips and under frame rate, you can see that two of the four are shot at 120 frames per second. This was uh, intended when I shot these clips that I wanted to slow them down. Uh, however, that first tip that I shared, which if I right click this and start a new sequence from clip, the issue is it's gonna start a sequence with uh, the settings 120 frames per second, which is incorrect because I want my final video to be 30 frames per second. So there's many ways that you can actually slow down footage in Premiere Pro. Uh, like many other things, they just have several ways you can actually accomplish a task. But in this case, we're gonna slow down this footage by right clicking the clip I want to slow down. And I'm gonna scroll down to modify, interpret footage, and you can see, use this frame rate from file, 120 frames per second, or assume this frame rate. So I'm gonna change the current frame rate of the video to my final frame rate that I want it to be, which is gonna be 29.97. And then I'm just gonna hit okay. And now you have uh, super slow motion going on. This is four times slow motion because it was shot in 120 frames per second. You divide that by 30, you get four. Awesome math. So just keep in mind, if you want the smoothest slow motion, just make sure you plan that ahead of time when you're shooting. Shoot at either 60 or 120 frames per second. And then when you're in Premiere Pro, you can then change the frame rate and get your smooth slow-mo going. The next tip is keyboard shortcuts. I love that Premiere Pro has this ability to actually customize my keyboard to help me uh, edit even faster. And I just wanted to share a few shortcuts that I like to implement uh, when I'm editing. And you can access those keyboard shortcuts uh, by clicking on Premiere Pro at the top of your screen. Uh, head over into keyboard shortcuts. And as you can see, it's kind of everything that you uh, is maybe default if you haven't messed with this already. But two things I want you to consider trying is number one, uh, it's called add, edit, to all tracks. Now this will just literally slice my video uh, all the way through from the top down. And I love this feature because when I'm editing talking head videos, uh, it just, it'll cut uh, right then and there. I don't have to hit C and then, and then cut. Uh, it'll just use the timeline. So let me, I'll show you how that works, but I'm gonna click and drag this onto X. So now I have applied it to my X. If it gives you a prompt, just say okay. 
And then the next one is called ripple delete. So I'm gonna hit, type in ripple delete here, and then I'm gonna drag it to Z. Now, uh, now I can keep my fingers really close to each other, but I'm gonna hit okay. And now what's so cool about these two shortcuts is if I'm editing talking head video in which we like helping a lot of entrepreneurs here on this channel and people who are like filming themselves, but if you wanna cut through your videos fast, you know, wherever your cursor is right here, which I use as my marker to cut. So if I like this cut right here, I'm just gonna hit the letter X and it's gonna make the slice. And then I'm gonna cut uh, that mess up out, which is right here. So I'm gonna hit X again. Then I'm gonna select the clip I wanna delete and just hit the letter Z. And then it then cuts out the clip and then brings the clip that I want closest to the other clip. And it makes it super easy to scrub through my A roll, like the talking head portion like this. Uh, super simple and so those are two cool shortcuts that I like using another few uh, if you don't know are like command Z and so if you did something that you accidentally didn't want to do you just hit command Z and then uh, there you have it. it you know it's right there if I wanted to take away the cuts now take away the cuts uh, so that's one another one is actually the letter a if I hit the letter a if you notice two arrows come up essentially um, if you want to move everything over so I don't have to like you know, click and select all my clips that are uh, there and then move them and accidentally miss one and then mess up my edit. You literally can just hit A and once this arrow comes up, just click and hold and it'll drag everything to the right of that clip. Uh, it'll select and drag as you select and drag. And so you only have to click one clip to then move. And this is very helpful if you wanna put something in between, you know, your edit or something like that. But I really love that trick as well. But all in all, just get used to getting good at shortcuts because it'll really speed up your editing. The next tip is getting better audio. Now what's so cool about Premiere Pro is they put a ton of audio effects that will help level up your audio uh, and make it sound better, but also fix audio in many cases. And so I wanna go through three effects that you wanna be aware of and know that you have to use at your disposal. The first audio effect is called hard limiter. And so if I go into my effects panel and type in hard limiter, as you can see, it's right here. I'm gonna drag that onto my audio clip. And then under effects controls, as I have my audio clip selected, if you unselect it, you won't see it. So I'm gonna click my audio clip. I'm gonna click edit. And then I'm gonna hit default and go to limit to negative three decibels. What this effect does is actually just make your volume at one level. And so, you know, if you're using inflections or there's parts in your video where you whisper, it'll just keep your volume level at a consistent place. We do this a lot for our videos here at Think Media because we just wanna make sure that the listening experience uh, is consistent. I don't know if you've ever listened to a podcast or watched a video and the audio is all over the place and you find yourself, you know, changing your volume uh, up and down. And so uh, this effect actually allows that to not happen and just keep your audio at a consistent level. The next audio effect I want you to know about is called D reverb and this actually helps with echo and so if you are in an echoey room or you uh, you want to reduce some uh, of that reverb happening in your audio uh, you're gonna type in D reverb one word and then again drag it onto your audio clip and I don't like doing anything too crazy with this I'm just gonna hit edit and then I'm gonna change this to light reverb reduction now you can go deeper with all these audio effects as far as you know, adjusting the knobs and the switches and things like that. But for this case, I just wanted to get you abreast on the knowledge uh, about these effects because many times people have uh, audio issues or you wanna fix things in post. And this is actually a great tool to help with a little bit of that reverb. And any of these audio effects, if you mess with a ton, can actually make the audio sound unnatural. So just make sure you're, you're not going too crazy with these effects, but they definitely are great tools. The next audio effect I want you to know about is called de-noise. And this will help with the noise in your audio or if you have a little bit of hiss going on, uh, like when there's nothing happening, uh, but you wanna eliminate that hiss or that noise, you can type in de-noise, whoa, add it to your effects and then under your effects control, you would just then, you know, maybe do a light noise reduction. Again, this is another effect that if you start messing with it, it can really make the audio sound weird or you're like in this like cave or sorts, but more than anything, use these effects to help your audio. At a minimum, we always add that hard limiter to make sure our audio is leveled, but play with these effects and I hope that they help. The next tip is to color correct and or color grade your video using Lumetri. And the way you access this, it's super cool. If you if you are in this window workspace, which is, this is the default setting, 
Uh, if you don't see this, you can actually click over to Window, Workspaces Editing. And then you can see right here, it says Color. When I click that, you can see all these kind of settings come up. Uh, if I click the clip I want to grade or adjust, uh, I can just simply click and then now I can adjust things like my white balance so I can cool it off if I feel like it was a little too warm. Um, I can bring down my highlights and bring down my shadows. Um, I can mess with my blacks. I can also add um, saturation and some sharpness. Uh, but this is just a cool way to kind of like give your video a little bit more juice um, if you'd like to. Now, you know, you don't have to get into color grading and I'm a fan of cameras that actually have great colors straight out of the camera without having to do this. But it's definitely something cool to start playing and dabbling with it. So like if you wanna add like a certain vibe to your video or just make it pop a little bit, like this video as you're seeing right now, this is how it looks, not graded. And then when I throw my grade on and then it looks like this. But you know, a lot of people go and spend a lot of money on LUTs and things like that. There's actually a free uh, preset that Premiere has that I wanna show you right now. Uh, that's super easy to use and I just love how it looks and so let's go into that right now I'm gonna go into the effects panel and then I'm gonna search the word Fuji now this first Fuji preset that's in Premiere Pro is totally free when I drag this onto my clip it really uh, adds a nice little flare but then then I can hop right back into color and adjust it a little bit more so I think it's a little warm so I'm gonna cool it off a little bit uh, uh, probably bring down the blacks um, I like to up the saturation a tad because it's a little flat. Um, and then uh, if you want to adjust the intensity, so like maybe you're, you're shooting with footage that's already, you know, has your all your colors there, you can actually lower uh, or increase the intensity of this preset or LUT if you're using one. But uh, you know, like I'll, I'll bring it down a little bit. But just that quick little add-on to my clip, if I toggle on and off the clip, you can see the difference and that didn't take me much time at all. And so I really enjoy color grading because not only is it therapeutic, uh, I feel like it's really fun to really get your colors right, get the skin tones right. And also in different situations, like when we're shooting outside or we change the lighting up or we're using natural light to really uh, get the look that you're really going for. But that brings us to half of the video. We have been five tips in. Let's take a like break for a second. Hit like button if you're getting value in this video. And I got five more tips, so let's get right into them. The next tip is super helpful for content creators, people who film themselves or potentially have you know longer form content and maybe the little bit of mistakes or mess ups in between and you wanna get those out. I found that it's super helpful to actually edit backwards. Now the reason why I encourage editing backwards is because many times if you're using a script or an outline and you are doing a YouTube video, maybe uh, one take, two takes, whatever takes, if you're editing it in the chronological order that you are shooting in, then you're gonna find yourself constantly messing up potentially and always catching that mistake. Now, if I edit backwards, I'm usually gonna get the best take because you got it right the last time, right? So a uh, good tip, and this kind of goes along with the uh, you know the keyboard shortcuts. So here I have an example clip. This is what I would consider a roll or a talking head. You know, uh, usually this could be anywhere from 30 minutes long to 20 minutes long, but the video itself is probably going to be around six minutes long, right? Um, who can share in that frustration? Let me know in the comment section below. But I'm going to zoom in here by hitting the press button or the plus button. Uh, I'm gonna take the cursor to the my my last best take, uh, and so I'm I'm here at the end of my clip, and I'm gonna uh, zoom in and then just cut right before that uh, audio. And I actually like using audio more than video to reference these things because you could see the breaks and the mistakes. Like I know by looking at this audio, and you can actually expand it by clicking and dragging this thing. I know by uh, looking at the audio, I probably messed up right here, in which I did. To just level up your video. Dang it. Okay. The next is a directional mic. This. Dang it. But I'm just gonna find this is the best, the better take right here. And I'm just gonna hit X and use that shortcut that we used earlier. Uh, if you didn't do that shortcut, then just hit C and then you can you know, can cut right there. And then I'm going to uh, go to the, the part where I left off, which is at the end of the last best take. And so I know that that is also a good take because I'm going backwards. So I'm just gonna clip in here and see when I mess up. It was up to 40 bucks, but uh, another one that you wanna think about. So that's where I messed up. So I'm gonna just cut right here, X, and then I'm gonna select and then hit Z. And now- It was up to 40 bucks, but 
The next one is a directional mic. So that's a lot better, but you know, maybe I'll like clean it up a bit so it's a, a little quicker. There's not too much of a pause. Um, but the next one is a directional mic. This one. And a good little tip here is that actually I can click on this clip and then do a little zoom in. Uh, and then I'm gonna like mess with where my face is at. And then now it should look a little more seamless because I zoomed in. Bucks, but the next one is a directional mic. This so it's essentially like I didn't mess up, but the tip is here is to edit backwards to save you time uh, with your A-roll or your talking head video. The next tip is adding text and then transitions to that text so they can move in and out of your frame. And so in this example, we have the Canon M50 and I'm actually putting on a lens and I just wanna put a, a title of the type of lens. So the way you're gonna add text is you're gonna hit the letter T and then you're gonna click on the screen right where you kind of want it to be placed. You can move it later, but for generally speaking, and then I'm gonna type in the, the lens that I've, that's shown in this video. It's a Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens, and that's not the font, nor is that the size, nor that is that the actual placement I want it. However, uh, a good way to start editing your text, you can do it in your effects controls panel, but I would encourage hop over into the graphics workflow or workspace, and then I'm gonna hop over into edit. And as you can see, all the things that you need to mess around with your actual text uh, could be found here. You can change the color of your font, you can add strokes, you can add backgrounds and stuff like that, play with it. But I definitely wanna change the font to what we like to use, uh, which right over here is Helvetica. You wanna make sure also that you are selected. As you can see right here, I'm selected. Uh, I'm gonna go in to select Helvetica new black italic. And then uh, that's pretty cool. I definitely want it a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna come over here and increase the font size. Awesome. The next thing I actually wanna do, and you can actually hit the letter V and then you know like drag it where you want to put it. When I'm messing with text, I definitely like to add safe margins. So just right click your uh, clip right over here and then enable safe margins. And now you can see I wanna put the text right inside this second box just to make sure it doesn't get cut out. I'm gonna drag that text right where I want it. And the next thing, I'm actually gonna put a black box behind it and you can do that by hitting this new layer, add a rectangle, and you know if it, you can change whatever color you want uh, right here, you can change the color. Um, and for this example, I'm just gonna use black. I'm gonna then drag this underneath my text right over here. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just so it's easier to grab. But as you can see, you see how it's covering my text? It's because right over here, it's on top of my text. If I drag this and put it underneath, so thinking like layers, now it's underneath it. And so now I can just you know, reframe this box to be uh, just about how I like it. And uh, let's move it right there. And boom, you're good to go. And so there's my text. If you wanna create a new one, you can just literally um, hold down option, drag this, and then it'll create a duplicate. And then in that case, you can then, you know, add a different one with the same settings and things like that. Now I'm gonna add a transition so this comes into the shot. And we like using this uh, transition called push impact. And so I'm gonna hop back over into editing and then under effects, search the word push, add this right over here. And then as you can see, it comes into the shot right when I want it to. And then I want it to go out of the shot at around there but I can actually change the direction of this by clicking this transition. And then I'm going to change it from left to right. And then I'm gonna change this uh, to the left. That's good, I wanna keep it like that. So now my transition, it, now my text comes in, stays there, and then it comes right out, which is super cool. Now I'll put a link to this transition pack, it's free. Uh, so if you wanna get into this, what's super cool now is that you can actually download things like these transition packs and it's just in your Premiere Pro and it's super easy to install. Uh, and so check that out, we'll put links to it in the description below. The next tip is to edit with proxy footage. Now this tip can actually save you from having to upgrade your current laptop or computer because if you stepped into like 4K or maybe you're using drone footage or maybe your computer is just a little slow at editing your footage, you can actually create proxies. Essentially what proxying your footage is, is creating a lesser quality version of your clip or clips that Premiere Pro then communicates to while you edit only. And then when you export, it'll then reconnect to that higher quality clip 
or clips, and then you have super crispy footage and you didn't even have to upgrade your computer or laptop. Many times this can really just help speed up your workflow as well. If you find yourself editing and it's laggy, this will completely solve that. Now, the way to properly use proxies is when you drag in your clips or clip that you want to edit, uh, you're gonna right click that clip and then you're gonna go down to proxy, create proxies, and then I go as low as possible. So I'm gonna go to low resolution proxy and then make sure you click, you select next to original media. So it's gonna create another video clip uh, and it's gonna put it right next to the original one, which is super nice. And so I'm gonna hit okay. And then what will happen is Adobe Encoder will then open up and start creating that duplicate clip, but in a lesser quality. I love doing this knowing that I'm gonna edit the following day. I just do this right before I go to bed and my laptop will do all that work while I sleep. Now, once you have created your proxies, you want to toggle your proxies or turn them on, right? And so the way you do that is simply by uh, selecting it underneath your program monitor. This is the icon for switching out your proxies. As you can see, it says toggle proxies. Uh, if you do not see that, you're gonna hit this plus button right over here. You're gonna find that icon in the button editor and then you're just gonna drag that down there and then you'll you'll then see it and hit okay. And now you can see it, you can turn it off and on. But once you got all your proxies, turn that sucker on and edit your footage until you get to the place where you're about to export your video, then you can either turn that off or when you export, it, it won't export your proxy footage, it'll reconnect to the original clip and you just saved yourself a bunch of time in editing and 15% on your car insurance as well. The next tip is to edit vertical videos for social media. So if you wanna level up your Instagram stories or your uh, Facebook stories, everybody got their stories right, uh, you wanna edit you know, vertically and not horizontally. So uh, here's a great example. I filmed myself using my camera vertically, as you can see, but when I double click, it's definitely obviously in the wrong way. So the way we're gonna actually get into the right sequence settings is kinda like tip number one. So I'm gonna right click the clip, uh, new sequence from clip, and then once that pops up, I'm gonna select the sequence and right click that. Now I'm gonna go into sequence settings. And once that dialog comes up, you can see under video, it says frame size, horizontal, vertical. I'm actually gonna flip those numbers. So maybe you have a 1080 clip, it probably will say 1920 by 1080, but in this case, this is a 4K clip. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is swap these numbers uh, for their respective position. So I'm gonna actually select this and hit Command X for cutting. And then I'm gonna type in 2160. Then I'm gonna select the 2160 and then paste the 3840. And then now I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna ask, it's gonna give me a prompt, but I'm gonna say okay. And then there you have it. Now my, uh, now my sequence is vertical. Now I need to rotate my clip. And so I'm gonna do that by clicking the clip, hopping into my effect controls and change my rotation to either negative 90 or positive 90, whichever way you actually held your camera. And now I have vertical video and uh, now it's ready to, you know, you know, I can export this or add text or make it super cool and creative. But this is how you can get leveled up vertical video in your Instagram stories. The next tip is to render your video with the best settings for YouTube. And the reason why you can know what the best settings are is because you can actually go online and we'll put a link to this in the description below. Uh, but you can actually see whether you're doing 4K or 1080, it tells you what your bit rate should be. That is an important uh, word and a number that you need to remember. So uh, right over here in for our you know SDR uploads, which is essentially what we're doing, if I'm shooting in 4K and I'm editing in 4K and I'm exporting in 4K, my bit rate's gonna be anywhere from 35 to 45. Good to know, 35 to 45. Now, if I'm doing 1080, it can be at eight, eight or 40. So those are the two numbers I'm gonna remember. Now let's hop into Premiere Pro and let's just say hypothetically speaking, I am done with my project here. So I'm gonna go to the beginning of my video and hit the letter I uh, for the in point and I'm gonna to go to the end of my video and hit the letter O for my out point. And then I'm gonna hit File, Export, Media. Uh, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure, yeah, this is on H.264. Uh, this is just your basic MP4 file. The next is you can actually leave it on match source high bit rate. Um, this is a good set it and forget it. And then you can just mess with the bit rate after we select that. Uh, you can also go down to high quality uh, sometimes I actually just go over here just to make sure that it, uh, it has all that back end stuff because there's a lot of settings I don't genuinely mess with because I'm trying to export render and move on to the next video. So in this case, I'm gonna select high quality 
4K. Now uh, I'm gonna change the output name by clicking right over here, and I'm just gonna go to the folder that I wanna save it to, call it M50 versus ZV1, hit save, and then I'm gonna scroll down all the way uh, under video, and as you can see, it says target bitrate, that, uh, that same word that we saw on that Google page. And remember in 4K, it was anywhere from 30 to 45. And so I'm just gonna put 40 right here. Uh, if I was shooting in 1080, then I would change this to eight. And uh, for this case, I'm gonna do it in 40 because I wanna keep that super crispy and nice. And uh, it's gonna be about a, a 1.3 gigabyte file. And then I can just hit export and you're good to go. Now the other export settings that I want you to know about is that Instagram clip or that clip for social media. And so if we're in this sequence uh, right here where it has vertical video, I'm gonna uh, again file export media or you can hit command M for the shortcut. Uh, I'm gonna hit H.264. I'm gonna go high quality 1080 this time. Uh, the issue is, is it makes it wide and the little life hack here is to actually click this checkbox and then it's gonna reference the sequence settings and then make the uh, video uh, vertical now. And then again, I can go down here, even though it's not for YouTube, but because it's 1080, I could probably put this at eight uh, just to save some time and save some room on my computer. And then I'll hit export and now I have that vertical video and you're good to go. And then if you have an Apple device, you can airdrop it to your iPhone and then post it on social media. If you have an Android, I'm so sorry, but uh, it's gonna be okay. Well, those are the 10 tips. I hope you found this video helpful. And let me know which one of those tips you liked the most and why down in the comments below. Learning how to edit video has become a skill that more and more people are learning because of where the world is going. But I assure you, Adobe Premiere Pro is one of the best editing softwares you can learn. So be patient, keep learning, and you'll get better every day. Now, if you wanna check out our Adobe Premiere Pro playlist, you can check that out by clicking or tapping the screen. And I cannot wait to see you in a future video. Peace.